Bullgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Palm Olive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave, bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, the nation's teachers took advantage of their Easter vacation in various ways. Some just lolled around the house, others played tennis or golf, and still others took the opportunity to go hunting or fishing. Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, spent most of her time trapping. But no matter what kind of bait I used, Mr. Boynton refused to fall into the trap. <laughs> I was discussing the bashful biologist with my landlady at breakfast last Friday morning. <clears throat> it's not that Mr. Boynton isn't fond of me, Mrs. Davis. This past week has proven that he is. In what way, Connie? Well, during the regular school term, Mr. Boynton has asked me for exactly one date a week, right? Right. And where did he take me on each and every one of those dates? To the zoo, right? Right. But in the past four days alone, he's taken me out on three dates. And where did he take you? If I see one more hyena, I'll laugh in his face. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you can't really blame a scientist for being so interested in animal life, but there must be some way we can get him conditioned to people. <laughs> There's still only one foolproof way to attract a mate, Connie And that's the old-fashioned, down-to-earth method Practiced by women throughout the ages Mrs. Davis, you mean... Exactly Cook him a good hot meal That'll make him perk up his ears and eyes He'll either perk up his ears or turn up his toes <laughs> You know what kind of a cook I am, Mrs. Davis I'll do the actual cooking, Connie All you have to do is invite him well, he said he'd phone me this morning. Maybe I can ask him over for lunch. Splendid. What time did he say he'd call? At 9.30. And you know how punctual he is. Yes, indeed. You can set your watch by Mr. Boynton. What time is it now, Connie? Let's see. Well, that's funny. It's just 9.30 now. I guess Mr. Boynton overslept. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> Hello? Sorry I'm late, Miss Brooks. Oh, you're not very late, Mr. Boynton. Oh, I'm afraid it's past 9.31, and I said I'd call at 9.30. Oh. Well, that's all right. I whiled away the time by whipping up a pot roast. <laughs> Miss Brooks, in all the years we've known each other, we've never shared in any one big venture together. Aren't you forgetting your gasoline bill? <laughs> I'm serious, Miss Brooks. I'm not much of a boy for these kind of speeches, but, well, I feel that the time has come for me to take a step that might well be the turning point in my life. Why, Mr. Boynton. Miss Brooks, I've got a pr proposal to make to you. I do. I mean... <laughs> I mean, go ahead, Mr. Boynton. What I'm suggesting is a, a partnership. A partnership founded on mutual regard, integrity, and a simple handshake. My hand's shaking already. <laughs> naturally, I, I'd like you to keep this proposition a secret until we work out all the details. Naturally, naturally. And I, I don't like to talk about a thing like this on the phone. Would it be possible for you to have lunch with me today? Possible? It's positively probable. <laughs> uh, what time and where, Mr. Boynton? Well... You mentioned a pot roast, I believe. Oh, of course. We'll have lunch right here. How about 12 o'clock? I'll be there, Miss Brooks. And somehow I have the feeling that this might lead to pretty big things. If they take after us, they should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Boynton, dear. Goodbye, Miss Brooks, likewise. <laughs> Mrs. Davis, it was Mr. Boynton, and he's coming over to lunch. Good. We still have most of that pot roast you made for last night's dinner, haven't we? Certainly, dear. All you'll have to figure out is what to put around the roast. How about Mr. Boynton and me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean like, like vegetables and things. Yes. And you'll want a nice dessert, too. Why don't you stop in at the drugstore and get one of their ice cream cakes? All right, I'll leave in a few minutes. And while you're in the drugstore, I wish you'd pick up a couple of batteries for my flashlight. And, oh, yes, I needed a new garden hose, too. 
Which drugstore do you have in mind? The one that sells used cars? No, the one on Elm Street. You know where my brother Victor got those pretty doe skin slacks. Of course, uh, the flashlight batteries are only sold in the electronics department. That's in the rear. I know. Just before you come to the psychiatrist's office. <laughs> I wonder what ever happened to the old-fashioned drug stores, the kind that used to sell peroxide and Blue Jay corn plasters and Hammond organs. <laughs> There, the table's all set for lunch, Connie. What time did Mr. Boynton say you was coming? Twelve o'clock, Mrs. Davis. Uh, oh, what time is it now? It's about as twelve o'clock as it'll ever get. <laughs> but before I let Mr. Boynton in, Mrs. Davis, I'd like to ask a favor of you. What is it, Connie? Well, so far it's a big secret, but Mr. Boynton has something very important to say to me today, and I'd appreciate it if you'd... Well, just sort of make yourself scarce while he's here. Oh, I get you, Connie. Don't worry about a thing. I'll do it very tactfully. Be right with you. Oh, I, I hope I haven't kept you waiting, Miss Brooks. It's only been four years. I mean... <laughs> oh, you mean for lunch? Oh, not at all. Come on in, Mr. Boynton. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Oh, hello, Mrs. Davis. How are you? Oh, I can't complain. How's the weather out today? Well, I should say that the temperature's about 68 with a relative humidity about 20. However, barometric pressure indicates a warm front moving in from the southeast, which, which would elevate the thermometer considerably. Roger, Wilco, over and out. <laughs> I'd like to stay and chat with you for a while, Mr. Boynton, but I've got to rush right into my room. What's your hurry, Mrs. Davis? It's the only way I can think of to make myself scarce. <laughs> now, you be a good boy, Mr. Boynton. Connie, if you need me, just yell. I should live so long. <laughs> See you later, Mrs. Davis. Uh, Miss Brooks, before we sit down to lunch, I'd like to clarify some of the remarks I made to you on the telephone... You see, I got the feeling at times that you didn't quite comprehend the nature of this deal. Deal? Yes, it's a real estate deal. Uh, my Uncle Harry over in Florence has given me the opportunity to pick up the option on a couple of choice lots. I'm letting you in on the ground floor, Miss Brooks. I couldn't feel any lower if you let me in the basement. <laughs> I mean... What am I supposed to do with a couple of lots? Oh, they're not just any lots, Miss Brooks. They're a wonderful buy. My uncle says they should triple in value in a few months, and he ought to know. He's justice of the peace in Florence. Knows everybody in town. Your uncle is justice of the peace? Well, yes, he has been for years. Well, it's a good thing he doesn't depend on you to throw business his way. <laughs> but how come you never mentioned your Uncle Harry before? Oh, I don't know. I never thought of it, I guess. He's always been after me to get married and settle down. Peculiar old codger. Careful, Mr. Boynton. You're speaking of the uncle I love. <laughs> well, the nicest part of this option is we won't have to put up much cash to secure it. When can we take a look at these prospective oil fields? Well, I thought we'd drive out right after lunch. It's not very far. Oh, fine. Now let's sit down, Mr. Boynton. We'll have a nice, cozy lunch. Just you and me. And the doorbell makes three. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, it's Walter Denton. Greetings, most revered and hallowed instructor. <clears throat> well, thanks, Walter, but what brings you to your ivy-covered old teacher during vacation? Well, I was just cruising around the neighborhood, and I thought you might want to lift somewhere. Oh, that was very thoughtful, but I've got company, Walter. Company? And... Who? Oh, it's Mr. Boynton. Hi, Mr. Boynton. Hi, Walter. We were about to have our lunch. Lunch? Oh, gee, that's embarrassing, Miss Brooks. My barging in on you like this, I mean. I hardly know what to say. Have you thought of goodbye, Miss Brooks? <laughs> Gosh, something smells awfully good. Haven't you eaten your lunch yet? No, I haven't, Miss Brooks. Then don't let me keep you. <laughs> now I know what that delicious smell is. It's pot roast. Mm -hmm. Miss Brooks, would you mind terribly if I... Well, that is, could I... Of course, Walter. Go right ahead and take another sniff before you leave. <laughs> oh, well, I'll just say goodbye to Mr. Boynton first. 
Guess I'll be running along now, Mr. Boynton. What's your hurry, Walter? Oh, Walter has any number of pressing things to do, haven't you? No, ma'am. No, I haven't got a thing to do. (laughs) Smell that gravy. I'm starved. Well, as long as Walter's so hungry, Miss Brooks, maybe you ought to give him a bite. I'll be glad to. (laughs) Stick out your arm, Walter. (laughs) I mean, let's all sit down. Oh, man, that's what I call a meal. I sure enjoyed it, Miss Brooks. Oh, I'm glad, Mr. Boynton. How did you like it, Walter? (laughs) He's still liking it. (laughs) You said a mouthful that time. Well, we'd better get going, Mr. Boynton. If you'll excuse me a moment, I'll say goodbye to Mrs. Davis. Certainly. Come in. I just wanted to say goodbye, Mrs. Davis. Oh, well, have a nice time, dear. Oh, before you go, I forgot to tell you that while you were shopping, Mr. Conklin called. He said he wanted to talk to you about something this afternoon. This afternoon? But I'm going to be busy. I'm going over to Florence with Mr. Boynton. I tell you what, Connie, just leave a phone number where I can reach you. And if Mr. Conklin sounds too terribly urgent the next time he calls, I'll let you know. All right, Mrs. Davis. And when you go into the dinette, don't be alarmed if you see a tall boy with a slightly purple face. It's Walter Denton. Walter Denton? What's he doing here? The last time I saw him, he was eating the string around the pot roast. (laughs) Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What cleans your teeth? Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What cleans your teeth? Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Yes, the Colgate way is the most thoroughly proved and accepted home method of oral hygiene known today. Over two years' research showed brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. The Colgate way stopped tooth decay best. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, offers such conclusive proof. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate's Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, before she and Mr. Boynton left for the community of Florence, Miss Brooks jotted down his Uncle Harry's phone number and left it on Mrs. Davis's telephone stand. About an hour later, Walter Denton arose from the living room couch, stretched, yawned, and spoke. Oh, nothing like a good meal and a nice nap. Miss Brooks and Mr. Boynton took off, huh? Quite a while ago. But while you were sleeping, Mr. Conklin called and said he had some important reports that he wanted Miss Brooks to get out by tonight. Where'd she go? She didn't say. She just left this phone number. But I've misplaced my glasses again. Will you dial it for me? Oh, sure, Mrs. Davis. Uh, abba dabba 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 at... Funny, I can never remember the rest of those words. Hello, Justice Henderson speaking. Who? Justice of the Peace Henderson. I must have the wrong number. Is this Florence 2164? That's right. Well, is Miss Brooks or Mr. Boynton there? Oh, no, indeed, they were here, but as soon as they signed the necessary papers, they took off like a couple of kids. <laughs> Papers? You mean they... Oh, they sure are. They're hooked up now. (laughs) Well, I'll be. Thanks, Your Justiceship. Thanks a lot. (laughs) Who were you talking to, Walter? To a Justice of the Peace, Mrs. Davis. Our little Miss Brooks is a married woman. (laughs) What? Oh, Oh, but she never mentioned a word to me. Surely she... Well, she must have a very good reason for keeping this marriage a secret. Now, I know I can depend on you to keep whatever you suspect to yourself, Walter. As one of Miss Brooks' most trusted confidants, I can do no less, Mrs. Davis. Rest assured that this secret is ours and ours alone. 
let's see now. What's Harriet Conklin's phone number again? <laughs> Seventy-six, seventy-seven. Hey, here we are, seventy-eight and seventy-nine. These are the lots we've optioned, Miss Brooks. How do you like them? I can't see them under all that mud. <laughs> Must have rained out here last night. But this property's going to be very valuable someday. All it needs is a few improvements. You mean like replacing the swamp with a dirt road? <laughs> oh, I, I know you're jesting, Miss Brooks. Oh, it's beautiful out here. J- just take a breath of that air. Hmm, it's enough to make a person burst into song. I know just how you feel. Bum, 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 Chloe! (laughs) Please, Miss Brooks. (laughs) Please, these these happen to be two of the choicest lots in this part of the country. I know, but what country is this? (laughs) My Uncle Harry wouldn't give us a wrong steer, Miss Brooks. This may be the start of a very lucrative sideline. After we sell this property at a profit, there's no telling how far we can go. Unless we pick up a couple of lots on Mars, this is about as far as anybody can go. (laughs) Oh, it isn't that bad. Well, I guess we better start back now. Just how far is it to civilization, Mr. Boynton? I don't know the exact mileage, but we're not too far from home. Now, don't worry. I'll get you back all right. Oh, I'm not worried, Mr. Boynton. But just to be on the safe side, let's get some directions from that bear over there. Daddy! Oh, Daddy, where are you? I'm lying down on the living room couch, Harriet. You have my permission to approach me. While you were napping, Daddy Yes, yes, I heard it vaguely But I dozed off again while you were speaking Was it Miss Brooks answering my previous call? No, Daddy, it was Walter Golly, I don't like to violate a confidence But you are my father And you also happen to be the principal of my high school Of course, Harriet, Harriet, this is vacation time for me When your dear mother left the house this morning To visit your dear granny I rather looked forward to this as a day which would be singularly free from yatata. <laughs> so if you cannot control this impulse to jabber at me, please... But it's not jabber, Daddy. It's... Oh, wait till you hear this news. Please, child. Must you make all your remarks sound like a bulletin which will send me leaping into the air as if a couch spring had erupted beneath me? <laughs> Sorry, Daddy. It's just that Miss Brooks has eloped. So she's eloped. During her vacation period, every teacher is entitled to do whatever he or she... Miss Brooks has eloped! (laughs) Oh! I must be calm. I must remember my blood pressure. So she's done it. The one woman on the entire faculty I could have sworn was elope proof. Oh, Daddy, you shouldn't be so upset. After all, it isn't a tragedy. Oh, it isn't, eh? Do you think you find capable English teachers on trees? No, Daddy. Although at the moment I wouldn't mind seeing this one dangling from a tree. <laughs> well, don't stand there gaping, girl. It's almost 5:30. We've got to go over to Mrs. Davis's place and get to the bottom of this. But what can we do, Daddy? By now, they're probably on their honeymoon. That's where you're wrong, Harriet. Mr. Boynton couldn't possibly start on his honeymoon today. Why not? The zoo closes at five sharp. It's getting pretty dark, Mr. Boynton. We'll have to hurry if we're to be home in time for dinner. Oh, I'm not planning on getting back for dinner, Miss Brooks. After the splendid lunch you prepared for me at noon, I I thought it only fair to reciprocate. You mean we're going to a restaurant? Not exactly. I I thought we'd eat on the road. Aren't you afraid of being hit by passing cars? (laughs) There are lots of nice little roadside places, Miss Brooks. After all, it isn't the food that's important. It's the fun of having, having it together. You're so right, Mr. Boynton. And being treated to dinner is even more fun. Of course, after that lunch we had, it'll be difficult to eat very much more. 
Oh, I don't know. I could find room. <laughs> Just think, we had pot roast, potatoes, lima beans, salad, rice pudding, and milk. But that was six hours ago. I know, but when people get past their 20s, Miss Brooks, much of their caloric intake turns to nothing but flabby blubber, and uh, <laughs> if there's one thing that makes a woman attractive to me, it's a, a nice, slim figure. Mr. Boynton? Yes? Pass me a toothpick and keep on driving. <laughs> Almost seven o'clock and still no word from Connie. He didn't like her to do things like this. Get married, you mean? Please, Walter, this is no laughing matter. Just think, Mr. Conklin. Only six hours ago, I had lunch with them. What? Then you must have been the last person to see them alive. <laughs> uh, single, single. Of course, outside of that alleged justice of the peace you spoke to, there's no real proof that they're married. Golly, Daddy, what more proof do you want? You tell me, Denton, when you saw them at lunch, how did they act? How did they look? Same way they always do. Miss Brooks didn't take her eyes off Mr. Boynton's face, and Mr. Boynton didn't take his eyes off his plate. Oh, that's the front door. I'll go. Oh, and me too. So will I. Harriet, stand where you are. We'll wait in here. Connie. And Mr. Boynton, come on in. Oh, hi, folks. Connie, you bad girl. You should have let me know. At least I could have had some rice ready to toss at you. Well, thanks just the same, Mrs. Davis. But when you get past 20, rice just turns to blubber. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Boynton. And you too, Miss Brooks. I... <laughs> Miss Brooks. Oh, gosh, I guess I'll always think of you as Miss Brooks. You don't mind, do you? Mine? What should you think of me as? Casey Stengel? <laughs> Still in there pitching. But what you've done has made most of us very happy. <laughs> now, I, for one, am looking forward to the day when you invite me out to your new place. Well, you can come out anytime, Walter. Sure, we'll sit around and make mud pies. <laughs> you've got more company in the living room, Connie. Come on in. Oh. Well, Mr. Conklin and Harriet. Best of everything, folks. Thanks, Harriet. I cannot share my daughter's enthusiasm for this affair. I'm deeply chagrined at not being notified. Well, you see, sir, my uncle didn't want too many people to know about it. Your uncle? What has he got to do with anything? Oh, he was responsible for the whole deal. He's the justice of the peace in Florence. But as principal of Madison High, I am entitled if to... If I know may something... say so, Mr. Conklin, I, I don't think it should concern anyone at school if, if I want to go out and pick up a piece of property. What a strange way to put it <laughs> But it does concern Madison I have a right to know whether or not we're losing our English teacher Losing me? But Mr. Conklin, I'm nowhere near financial independence yet I've got to continue my teaching Don't forget, this is only my first venture <laughs> Your first venture? Well, certainly If this one works out She may take a crack at four or five others <laughs> What? Well, why not? After all, Mr. Boynton's uncle Can probably put me next to plenty of good things <laughs> Well, I never... <laughs> Harriet, Harriet, Walter, leave the room at once. <laughs> You're too young for this sort of conversation. We've aged considerably in the last few minutes. <laughs> I can't understand you, Connie, taking your marriage so lightly. My marriage? Her marriage? Didn't you two get married this afternoon? Miss Brooks and me get, get married this afternoon? What? Heavens, no! <laughs> Can you imagine anything like that, Miss Brooks? Constantly <laughs> But if you're not married, why did Walter tell Harriet well, that you I were... only told Harriet what Justice Henderson told me That they signed the papers and were hooked up Oh, now I understand When Uncle Harry told you we were hooked up, you thought we were married Well, sure, wouldn't you? Oh, but the whole thing was just a real estate deal. Miss Brooks and I bought some lots together. Lots? 
Well, oh, <laughs> this is rich. <laughs> <laughs> what a mix-up. <laughs> it's a scream. <laughs> yeah, this entire affair is nothing but a comedy of errors. As a student of Shakespeare, don't you agree, Miss Brooks? As a student of the Kefauver Committee, I refuse to answer on the grounds that it may tend to incriminate me. <laughs> Arden returns in just a moment, but first... You'll get smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves by shaving the palm on a brushless way. Yes, smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves the palm on a brushless way. Hey, hey, that's a fact, men. You can get smoother, yes, more comfortable shaves the palm olive brushless shaving cream way. Just rub velvet smooth palm olive brushless into your beard you'll find it wilts the toughest whiskers, actually protects your skin by providing a soft film that floats your razor's cutting edge. Remember, over 1,200 men tested the Palmolive Brushless Shaving Cream Way following directions on the package. And no matter how they shaved before, three out of four reported beards easier to cut, less razor pull, smoother, more comfortable, yes, more comfortable shaves. So men, try the Palmolive Brushless Way yourself. Even in cold or hard water, you get a close, clean shave. And a smoother, more comfortable, yes, a more comfortable shave. You'll get smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves the Palm Olive Brushless Way. Next time you shave, try the Palm Olive Brushless Shaving Cream Way. Now, once again, here is Eve Arden. In the event of enemy attack, who would be the first to rush to the aid of the stricken? Who is always first in any disaster? The Red Cross. Because of the present national emergency, the Red Cross must mobilize for defense at once. To do it, they need your help. A contribution to this outstanding organization is a contribution to the comfort and aid of your loved ones and yourself in time of any emergency. So give generously. The need is great. To another Our Miss Brooks show Brought to you by Tom Holly Shave Cream For a smoother, more comfortable way to shave And Colgate Dental Cream To clean your breath while you clean your teeth And help stop tooth decay Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden Is produced by Larry Burns Written by Al Lewis and Arthur Allsberg With the music of Wilbur Hatch Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crana, Gloria McMillan, and Paul McVeigh Ladies and gentlemen We take pride in announcing that Eve Arden has been named radio's most outstanding female personality by the Southern California Society of Radio and Television Editors. Thank you very much. To this, with Marvellous Bell, B-E-L, you can save 90% of dishwashing work. A quick soak in Vell Suds gets dishes and glassware shiny clean. Even if a bit of food should cling, a touch with a dishcloth gets rid of it fast. Yes, Vell's activated suds lift off and carry away food and grease. So all dish dishes need is a quick rinse, and they dry sparkling without washing or wiping. All pots and pans need is a soaking with Vell Suds. Then you can wash them shiny clean without hard scouring. What's more, Vell is a miracle of mildness. So get new Vell. Save 90% of dishwashing work. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over this same network. Hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. <laughs> Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.